Archaeology breakthrough as skeleton DNA uncovers first people to call themselves English. The original Englishmen largely descended from Northern Europeans, mainly Germany, Denmark and the Netherlands. Archaeologists have made a spectacular discovery after the analysis of DNA from skeletons from across England has exposed where the first ever groups of people to define themselves as English originally came from. The researchers found that the first official Englishmen descended mainly from Northern Europeans, primarily from Germany, Denmark and the Netherlands. But it was also found that one individual had a genetic link to West Africa, indicating that there was a diverse and complex culture in England during the early Middle Ages. This has poured cold water over theories claiming that English ancestors only lived in small elite groups. Archaeologists assessed the DNA of 460 people who were buried in graves between 200 AD and 1300 AD, with 278 being from England. The research published in Current Archaeology and one of the largest ancient DNA projects in Europe. Professor Duncan Sayer, project leader and archaeologist from the University of Central Lancashire, said, this reminds us that our past isn't this little quaint village where everybody dances around a maypole. The research is a breakthrough, it challenges our perceptions and understanding of ancient England, showing how pivotal migration is to who we are, and for the first time allows us to explore community histories in new ways. And while the DNA analysis unveiled significant population changes across England during in the Middle Ages, it also revealed some striking individual stories too. This includes that of a young girl buried in early 7th century Kent, whose remains were discovered close to Updown Farm in the village of Eastry. The analysis indicated that she was around aged 10 or 11 when she died. A pot, a bone comb, a knife and a spoon were found among her remains, which were typical burial grave goods. Because she was buried in this way, the researchers have speculated that the girl, who has been nicknamed Updown Girl because of where she was discovered, was treated the same as as other family members even though she was of different ancestry. Findings show that 33% of her DNA came from West African ancestry, most closely resembling Ezen or Yoruba groups. Current archaeology's editor Carly Hilt said, aged 10 or 11 when she died, this girl was buried in much the same way as the other early medieval individuals who were laid to rest at Updown, near Eastry. She was accompanied by very typical grave goods, a pot, a bone comb, a knife, and a spoon, and there was nothing to suggest that she had been treated differently, at least in death, even though the new genetic research highlights that her ancestry was very different to that of many of the people buried around her. The exciting thing about this study is how it brings long-forgotten human stories to life, revealing otherwise invisible family relationships and intrepid journeys made centuries ago, and shedding light on questions of migration, integration, and how burial customs varied within and between different communities. Two women, whose DNA was also analyzed, were found to be of Northern European descent and were likely to be the Updown Girl's great aunts. They were found buried in a similar way near to the young girl, belt hanging sets, beads, knives, combs, and spoons were found in their graves, suggesting they were an affluent family. The researchers also looked into the remains of a teenage boy who was found in West Heslerton an early medieval cemetery in Yorkshire. Analysis revealed that he had 100% Northern European ancestry and was buried with an armed brooch, an object which originated from Scandinavia. Meanwhile, two adolescents were found in a grave near RAF Lakenheath, including a boy of around 15 years old found buried by a knife and buckle, next to a girl aged around 12 years old in the double grave. The Max Planck Institute for Evolutionary Anthropology in Germany, has previously said of their ancestry, the mitochondrial DNA of these two indicated that they were first-degree relatives. It looks like this pair were older brother and younger sister, and that they were buried at the same time. Professor Sayer said, there's the macro story here, the fact that we have conducted the largest ancient DNA projects in Europe, providing completely new insights into one of the most difficult areas of British history to explore because of such limited source material. He added, then there's the personal elements of the research. Our work shows that this migration cannot be understood as one single event, rather, it's made up of many different threads, of individual people and families adapting to new circumstances across the regions of Britain. 